What happens when you get into debt? Get out now. Come back. Please, Please stop it. Oh, me. You calm down. And you can't. I haven't got any money. Or won't pay it back. Get off on my property. In this series, we meet the people who are losing their homes. Hello, would you like to open the door, please? Oh, 24 hours. Find somewhere else to go. Their cars. Can you pay this dress or not? I have to go with me now. I'm not going to take your cars off. And their possessions. I can't afford to pay the rent, but £700 telly. We meet the people who are owed money. Just got taken advantage of, big time. And the people whose job it is to collect it. I don't want to touch that. Don't panic. Because when you can't pay, they'll take it away. We'll start unplugging and uh, get things wrapped up to transportation. You pay me, and then I'll start. Figures released today show that the number of landlords going to court to repossess their property has reached a record high. Brian O'Shaughnessy and Graham Aldred are High Court enforcement agents. You go first, go, go, go. They've been working together for six years, seizing property. I'm going to get the removal vehicles on route because I'm not going to sit here all day. If you try and prevent us doing this, it's actually contempt of court. Collecting rent arrears. I need it paid today. You need to get another 600. And demanding payment on debts. We will not leave here until we get payment or assets possibly be removed. It does take a certain type of person to become an enforcement agent. You've basically got to switch off in this job. It's, there's a lot of emotions run through every job you go to. Every job is different. Hey, what have we got now, mate? It's 8 a.m. Brian and Graham are on their way to an eviction in Earlsfield, London. Most such jobs are routine, but today will not be one of them. Repossession, yeah? A, re a, a writ of repossession, yeah. Acting on information they've received, the police have been called in case trouble arises. They're meeting them at the property. If we have information that a debtor or a debtor's partner is violent, then, yeah, obviously, we're going to approach that job a bit more cautiously than what we would do. Uh, don't get me wrong, we, we approach every job cautious anyway, because, like I say, you don't know what's behind that door when it opens. The tenants occupy the top floor flat. <laughs> Morning, guys. Thanks for turning up. She's expecting a bit of trouble here, so that's why we called you. Are you ready? The landlady has put the flat on the market. She needs vacant possession. But despite being served with a county court judgment to leave the property, the tenants are still there. The landlady has gone to the High Court to get them out now. Hello. After a few more minutes, the tenant appears. Oh, hello, my love. Here we go. Great. Hello. You're not in any trouble with us. No. What you've got, you've got High Court sheriffs down. Who's this for? It's for a re repossession of what? Of the property. I've got the road letters to say there's any sort of repossession. Okay, well, we've got. A, that's not my issue or our issue. Our issue is to satisfy the High Court writ and we have to repossess the property. So what happens to me? But basically, you have to leave the property. Right now? Right yes. now. What's up? I appreciate his hard work. The hardest part of the job is when children are involved. Uh, obviously, with children, though, you've got to be more understanding, show them a bit more empathy, and obviously give them the time they need, especially if you're going there for a possession. I mean, you're actually going there to take somebody's house away from them. After waiting a few minutes, the tenants still haven't come to the door. Something over, mate. Marlow thinks we're evil. Let's just get in there and knock on the door. Brian is losing patience and ask the locksmith to break in. Hello, mate. Can, we, can you get us through the first door? If you can. Let me, let me go in first yeah, and yeah, have yeah. a chat. We'll here, uh, yeah, yeah let fine. me have a chat with her, you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 that's everyone. fine, mate. Just take one of the officers with you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. If they both want to go with you, that's yeah. fine. Lovely. Here you go. Wait. Thank you, sir. But there's still no one at oh. the door. The tenant's boyfriend now appears at an upper window. Come down to listen. I, I, hear me out, mate. My, my guy's downstairs, Graham. He'll come up and sit down and talk to you and explain what's going on. He'll advise you what to do and how to help you. All right? We know. We no, 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 now. It's got to be now. Let my colleagues in. In five minutes, I'm going to use the locksmith and I'm going to come in. So it's entirely up to you. 
door. Finally, 10 minutes after their arrival, the door opens. Hello, sir, how are you? You're all right. Yeah? Yes. Come on, let me come, come and explain something. Just joking, everyone's a bit upset about that. No, I, listen, I appreciate listen, that. No, no one's told us nothing. We're right. friends with the old man. Right. Really good friends. We want to date of everything. We ain't out of date of rent, nothing. We pay our rent yep. time. Everything is, is bang on. Graham and Brian now have legal possession. But the tenants are angry that the landlady hasn't warned them that they were about to be forcibly evicted. She's well, my friend. She said I've got eight weeks. Uh, guys, guys, let me, let me make it clear, yeah? We've got the eight weeks, so I understand and respect what you're saying there. People, people have the opportunity to upgrade the court. I yeah, judgment. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on. Shut up. Hang on, let's just... Let's... I've asked them for an extra 42 days on the um, advice from the council. Okay, okay. So how can this happen on the 10th of June and then today you've come here? There's always two sides to a story, yeah? I can call it hang on, hang on, no, 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 stop, I listen, 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 hang on, listen to what I'm saying. This is happening. Listen, okay. today I will I take possession of this property. Right. Stuck with me. I want my deposit and I want my rent in advance. Well, you can take up your issues through a solicitor or whatever you want to do afterwards. No matter how annoyed the tenants are, Brian and Graham want them out as quickly and peacefully as possible. I'll give you, I'll give you to 10 o'clock. Yeah. It's 20 past eight, yeah? I'll say no. Yeah. All right? Yeah. That's good, yeah. Fair enough. Despite the agent's expectation of trouble, the boyfriend is being cooperative. I think we're going to leave. We'll aim to come back at 10, but let us know if you don't yeah, need us. Yeah, no problem at all. I will do. I will do. Thank you very no much worries, for your help no, today. Pleasure. Cheers, guys. The family have just 90 minutes to leave. Upset, the tenant rings the landlady. She's going to go. Do you want to leave him a month and then go through it? And he went, do you know what, guys? Let me talk to you later. And he went, I have to listen to you through. No, see. Let me give the landlady a call, yeah? With temperatures rising, Brian calls the landlady. Um, I've walked away from the house. Um, I think her main issue um, here is two things. One, she keeps splatting out that you're her friend and it shouldn't be happening. And two, she wasn't aware of it. While Brian is on the phone to the landlady, the tenant tells Graham her side of the story. Listen, I know it's, I know it's stressful, I know it is. No, because she's meant to be my friend. I've got text messages, you're right, babe. Do you know what I mean? I've started getting boxes to post with. Right. No, I don't want you out yet, babe. No one's bought it. OK, listen, I'm just keeping you informed. Um, let, let's, let us do this, and I'll give you a courtesy call back. Don't answer the phone anymore, because I think it'll just fuel, fuel, upset you and fuel her. The landlady is now reassured that the eviction is going to plan. With the clock ticking and under Brian's watchful gaze, the tenants remove all they can from the flat. With just a few minutes till the agents take full possession, Brian receives an unexpected tip-off. There's a lot of drugs in the, in the egg. Yeah? Equipment. If the information is true, then for Brian and Graham, what was a straightforward morning could become a very difficult day indeed. So what you said he needs to get loads of stuff out of the, the egg. We need to check it out once we once they leave. Don't don't let on. No, not at all. But we'll have a good sniff about it. In fact, I'm gonna I'm gonna call the police back. Sometimes you get hearsay from third parties, you know, this and that, and that's in there, and this is in there. But until you get in there yourself, we don't make judgment. It's an hour since Brian asked the police to return. They're still not back. How will it work when we come and get our stuff back? Just or we just call you guys and then... You can call the office, then we can liaise and get it all arranged we'll for you, that's fine. To come back and then sort it. Oh, right, then. Yeah. Just leave us here for a few We'll minutes. get someone here, whatever, we'll sort it out. You can come in, whatever you need to do, yeah? First thing to do is yeah. get yourself a roof over yeah, your head tonight, yeah? And I'll make sure you can get in when you need to get the gear tomorrow, all right? All right. All right. Good, Good luck, back. yeah? I hope everything goes well for you, OK? Yeah. Good luck, God bless. All right, take care. All right, fella. There's now no one left in the flat, and there's a strange smell <laughs> in the air. Oh, mate. <coughs> Glad you're here, actually. Um, gone in here, and it absolutely stinks. You need to have a look up, because he said he'd yeah. locked a lot of stuff in the attic. Yeah. Hey, bro. Hey, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, 
mean, is there anything actually in there? Not really, mate, no. Fine, we'll leave it open. With the attic clear, Brian and Graham search the rest of the flat and find nothing. It might be. It might have had a joint. Might, have had a yeah. they might be right. Well, no, thanks for coming back, checking. That's it, we're done, that's it, yeah. All right, boys. Thanks see you later, guys. Thanks a lot. God bless. Where? Oh. I could smell it initially. It was really strong. Yeah. You didn't see anything in the loft, no? No. Nope. Brian and Graham continue taking an inventory, but remain suspicious. Men bedroom done. I think the smell's in here more than anywhere, Brian. Or in the bedroom? Yeah. The smell is strongest in one particular room, a child's bedroom. Yeah, I smell it now, I can back again. Where are you? Graham now spots a door they'd previously oh, I missed. Didn't realise this one was here. Oh. Yeah, here it is. What is it? Hydroponics. How much gear? There's a black room here. Any gear in there? One's empty. Hang on. Oh, he's got two. Yeah, one's growing. All right, let's call them back then. When we find drugs, it's more of a hindrance to us because once we phone them drugs, we then got to inform the police. So when we feel the job's over with, it's not because we've then got to wait for the police, obviously wait for the crime scene people to get there. Wonder if I could get the officers back. We've just located a, well, a drugs, a cannabis factory, basically. There's two uh, growing units in there. One of them's empty, one of them's full. Cheers, bye bye, bye bye. Fancy doing something like that here and then having reposition notices and threatening of eviction and all sorts, and then it just doesn't make sense. stupid, isn't it? Considering what he had there, I thought he was very calm and collected. It well was, was, was quite well hidden. Fight. There you go, I didn't even notice it. Yeah. You can see it now. Now I know what I'm looking for. And they've actually used the kids' stuff as well to hide it, yeah. For the third time in the morning, the police show up. I knew I could smell something here. Mate, bring your torch. Oh, I've been in just to have a quick look, and that's when I noticed the two. There's one tent at the front, which is empty, yeah. and then there's one behind it yeah. that's full with all the stuff still in there. You think you might have, taken, you think you might have disrupted the first one? I think he's emptied the first one and taken it all with him. Right, if you want to update, yeah, we'll update sport, let's get the name. Uh, we'll set up a scene, uh, and we'll get uh, forensics down. Who does that in the kids' bedroom? This is what I'm saying. <laughs> With the property now a crime scene, it's case closed for Brian and Graham. Thank you very much. Bye, Take care, guys. Bye. Bye-bye now. But before the agents can leave, there's one last development. We're just about to pull away. The female officer's popped out, and she's um, she's just informed us that they've located the individuals that were um, evicted today, and they've been arrested. So, um, job well done. been a massive rise in the number of people applying to councils for help after being made homeless. Latest figures show an increase of 26% over the last three years. It's 8am, Homerton, London. Paul Bowhill and Phil Gardner are about to serve a writ of possession. OK. Today, they must deal with a situation that'll test their years of experience to the limit. A tenant has seven months of rent arrears, and the landlord wants the property back. Evictions at the moment is the, is the growth industry. So we're now doing controlling in one way or another, probably 20 to 25 evictions every week. So they are skyrocketing, and I think we're only seeing the start of an avalanche of evictions. The landlord has given them a set of keys, but they have no idea who is inside. Hello. 
Hello? Is there anybody in? Hello? 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 Is uh, Mum and Dad here? Can you ring her on the phone? Hello? What's your name? Oh, how old are you? Six. Six. We turn up there, we're wearing bulletproof vests, we're obviously authority figures, and children do get frightened. Is Mum at work or is she out shopping? I don't know. Uh, I was sleeping. Were you? We do actually make an effort to befriend the children just in the first few minutes there. Can I speak to her? Police is all here. He wants to speak to you. Hello? Hello? Yeah. My name is Paul Bowhill. I'm a High Court Enforcement Officer. We have a repossession order for this flat. Are you able to come back quite quickly? All right, Mum's coming back. We'll wait outside. OK, then. Thank you. Yeah, that's no, fine. I'll leave this one on the side. We'll just wait out here. Interesting one. Leave the two young children in the house unattended. The girl can't be above nine or ten. Well, he's six, so she could be anything over seven, couldn't you? Yeah. With two young children alone in the flat, the agents are concerned and call the landlord. She had just gone down to the shop, she said. If she's gone away for the day, it's a different story. They discover that the tenant stopped paying her rent after losing her job with a train company. Father is in Ghana permanently. All right. So she doesn't have anywhere else to go. How does it get, really? It is, isn't it? The landlord has also told them that the flat has been the tenant's home for nine years. She will have just two hours to leave. Hello. You all right? We've got a repossession order for the flat. Is that a surprise to you, or did you know it was coming? I was told to evict, um, I was given an eviction order from the court today. About three weeks ago. For the ago. 15th. Yeah. To, to leave here for the 15th. Yeah. But we have no way to go, so I stayed. Okay. Your husband or your partner's gone back to Ghana, has he? OK. Is he likely to come back? OK. Are you... Do you have benefits to pay the rent? I haven't got... I have... I have the status to be here, but I have no recourse to public funds. Paul and Phil must evict the tenant today. She's got nowhere to go and is unable to claim benefits. Paul is worried. So what do you live on? Food banks received this voucher yesterday. Okay. I've recently acquired eight hours job from Matalan. It's on minimum wage, six pound thirty-four an hour, and it's eight hours a week. Right. It has just recently. This is. Is this for a month? This it's is a month. A month yeah. So that you, your net payment, you've got two hundred pounds and forty-three pence, yeah. and that is your only income. That is my only income. <clears throat> do you have a social worker? I do have a social worker. Yes. Have you got? Have you got a phone number for her? The tenant has already asked social services for help, but she has been turned down. <clears throat> Thank you. This assessment maintains are not children in need for the purposes of the Children's Act and that the family is not destitute. The outcome of this decision is that Hackney do not agree to provide support to your children as the matter stands. You have also advised me that you have recently obtained part-time employment you explain that you are offered eight hours a week to be paid a minimum wage. Hackney are likely to view even this extremely modest income as further evidence that you have the means to support your children. Paul and Phil face a dilemma. They must legally enforce the writ, but by doing so will put the tenant and her children on the streets.
Paul makes an unusual offer. Well, we've got a contingency fund, so I'll give you some money today to last you a couple of days so that we can resolve this situation. <clears throat> All right, that's just, it's not a gift. It's just that we allow for things like this to happen. So where we need a little bit of time to change things, we'll make it happen. For the vast majority of families who get evicted, there's a system in place to prevent them ending up on the street. But Paul is increasingly concerned that the tenant and her children may fall through the net. He calls the council's housing solicitor. Every day we go and benefit the claimants are claiming thousands of pounds and not paying the rent and so on. And I've walked into a situation here today which surprises and like completely mystifies me. Is it's a really unusual circumstances for me because I'm not moved or touched by anything like this. But, and I'm not, I'm not emotional about it. But yeah. if she's not entitled to benefits, do we just allow her and her children to wander the street and starve? Yeah, exactly, exactly. So there's got to be some sort of fallback system. It isn't that she's an immigrant or a refugee and she's not entitled to benefits. The council wouldn't move on the fact that I was going to put them in the street. I couldn't get the message through. She's going to be on the street at 5 o'clock on a weekday night, surrounded by all her goods and baggage, and one screaming kid, and another one who's nearly hysterical. What are you going to do? Because this is so unusual, yeah. it just, I'd like to follow it through. I just can't believe it's like reality. Given the desperate situation, Paul has come to a decision. He'll persuade the landlord to let the tenant stay one more night. But her only hope for the longer term is the council. Now, I've spoken to the solicitor who was dealing with it. We want to take you to the social services now. I'll give you my card. Have you got money on your phone? If you ring me or text me, I will always call you back. So if you get them ready... When you consider what we've been dealing with and then you hit something like this, it's the other end of the scale, isn't it? So we've taken exceptional measures. But I'm just trying to make the job run more smoothly. Um, and on the way, hopefully, if I'm ever homeless, somebody will make the same concessions to me. The tenant has no transport. Phil offers to drive her to the council offices. I don't know what's going to happen to us. And I've been scared for a long time. I try not to cry in front of them, but sometimes... Take care. Keep me... Tell me everything. Ring, send me a text and I'll ring you back. I need to know everything that's going on. The tenant must now plead her case at the council offices. If they refuse help, she and her family will be on the streets. More and more people are taking the plunge and starting their own business. But for every success, there's also many failures, with a trail of debts left behind. High Court Enforcement Agents Brian O'Shaughnessy and Graham Aldred are back on the road. What have we got next? Commercial rent. They're en route to collect unpaid rent from the tenants of a Polish deli in Ramsgate. We're here for the sum of... It's just under £4,000. Unusually, it's a commercial rent, meaning Brian and Graham only have the power to target business assets, not personal cash or belongings. The key difference between a high court rent and commercial rent is commercial rent, you don't have to go to court. It doesn't have to go down the court process. The tenants have been running their business for 17 months, but have fallen behind with the rent. The agents have the power to seize stock and equipment if the tenants cannot pay today. Hello. Hi, How are you? I'm okay. Hi, my name is Mr O'Shaughnessy. Um, I need to speak to uh, Mrs Monica. Are you Monica? Yes. Hi, Monica. Um, your landlord sent me down here regarding some rent arrears. 
Some what? Renter is, you're behind in your rent. The landlord has instructed us to come here and speak to you to resolve it, to collect payment. So we're here for an outstanding balance of £3,943.60. £3,943.60. Renter is and bailiff costs, enforcement agent costs. No, no, it's something wrong here because we paid everything to him. When did you pay it? Uh, last week. How much did you oh, pay him? On. No problem. Can you just um, give the office a call? Um, <laughs> and get hold of the client. So you paid some last week, did you? Yeah, I need to speak with my husband because oh, okay, he was no dealing problem. with him. Oh, okay, so okay, I okay. need to know. What no happened. problem, no problem. Uh, so it's paid last week. Monica claims her husband has paid. Graham calls the landlord to check. Right. Okay, we just spoke to the uh, landlord. The quarter is owing from May, June, and July. Has nothing been paid yet for the quarter, and also a shortfall from the last quarter as well. That's why it's so much. Yeah. Monica is keen to talk to her husband. Can't get hold of him, though. No, no but it's all the time the answer machine. Oh. Have you got means to pay it with a company debit card or anything like that? It has to be paid. Yeah, but I don't. That's why I'm calling to him. Right. OK, OK. He can just help you out, OK. If Monica can't pay, Brian and Graham can seize goods to the value of the debt. They start an inventory. The manufacturer. Serial number, yeah? Yeah. 0903. Yeah. 105. Yeah. 92. CAS, yeah. Yeah. 09104. Yeah. 1360. After an hour of trying, Monica finally reaches her husband on the phone. When we state that a possible outcome would be a removal of goods, it's never an empty threat. It's a, it's a strong possibility. Um, it's not something we take lightly, but it's something that they need to understand. Do you know how long he'll be? Uh, he's running from Margate, driving. How, how far is that? I don't know. Um, ten minutes. Fine, no problem. Fine. No problem at all. Thank you. Ten minutes pass. Monica's husband hasn't arrived. Brian issues a final deadline. We'll give another ten minutes. If he's not here in ten minutes, we have to up it to sale and disposal. It's just that we can't be here all day, that's all. <laughs> And now, Monica has another problem. What's wrong with her? She finished school. What time? No. If you if you want to go and get her, you can go and get her. Do you want to go? We'll wait. Do you want to? Don't be silly. Is 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 your child being picked up? Yeah? She Fine. If she's not, you can go. We'll wait for you, OK? Sorry. All right. No, no, no. It's no, OK. No, no. Don't be Don't sorry. It's understandable. You're not the first, then you won't be the last to do that. Hello? A few minutes later, Graham gets some news from the office, and Monica's husband finally arrives. Hello. Hi. How you doing? Brian okay, has some in. good news. My office have just called me, OK? The landlord's given you two weeks to pay him direct, yeah? Yes. But the bad news is, Monica and her husband must pay something now. How much? What was it? 706 plus VAT. How much? 706, 706 pounds, pounds, pounds plus, VAT. plus VAT. And then you've got two weeks to pay the landlord the debt that you owe him. If Monica and her husband can't make this part payment on the debt, they could still lose their stock. We can take card payments, no problem at all. As well as emptying the till, Monica tries to make payment by any means she can. So how much on card? Seven twenty. Decline. Oh, should we try six fifty? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. There you go. Excellent. Monica is getting closer okay. to the total, and one other issue okay. is resolved. Oh, sorry, any chance? It's yeah. Fine, yeah, yeah, it's fine. Hello. <sighs> <laughs> Daughter's picked up. Yeah. Yeah. Good. 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 So now what we have? £240. We are aware that cash flow for people is, is, isn't there. It isn't like it used to be. Uh, people have got the money tied up in stock. They've got the money tied up in other, other things. So, yeah, we, we appreciate that getting hold of cash or, or paying a debt straight away is, is very hard for most people. I don't have any 
It's all money. So it's 20, only 20 pounds short. Yeah. The tenants still come up short. Brian and Graham decide to leave it, but the debt to the landlord needs to be paid. If you don't stick to the agreement, we can come back here with a locksmith if you're not here or refuse the sentry, and we can come in, OK? Mm -hmm. I don't think it's going to come to that, OK, because I think you're going to sort it out. But if you don't pay it, we will be back. Do you understand that? OK. I'll put the thing as well for you. OK? Thank you. OK. Latest government figures reveal that between 2012 and 2013, 53,000 employees made claims against employers for unauthorised deductions from their wages. Paul Bowhill and fellow agent Steve Pinner are heading to Slough. Have we got a writ for this, then? They have a High Court writ for unpaid wages of nearly £2,000. And now they are instructed to collect. The writ is the last word. It's stamped, in fact, by a High Court judge. So it's the last word in enforcement orders. We've actually been there once before. Uh, there was nobody home. Left a letter, no reply. After that, he went back to court and offered to pay a pound a week, yeah. which is... That's just an insult. Yeah, basically. We are now entering Slough. No car, no windows open, blinds are down. This is the second time Paul and Steve have attempted to serve the writ. the official knock. Mm -hmm. oh. Hello, oh. sir. Mr Wright. Yes. We have a High Court warrant here. High Court warrant? Yep. Right. Would right. you like to pay the money now? Uh, not at all. No, not at all. Any reason for that? Uh, I didn't know anything about it. You've been to court? You yes. made an offer to pay a pound a week, which wasn't accepted. Right, right. Okay. So to say that you don't know anything about it is probably stretching reality. Well, I don't know anything about your calling today. So no, we don't give any warning. Not, I can deal with the matter. That's not a problem. We'd like you to deal with it now. I'm sure you would. But I'm afraid that I'm not going to be giving her a penny of my money. The High Court has ruled that the plaintiff, Rebecca Sadler, is owed £1,800 for some market research work she and her mother did for the defendant, Mr Wright. It's a decision that is bitterly disputed. She was uh, contracted to do some work for me on a, a commission-only basis, and um, she was disappointed she didn't earn any commission, so she decided to take me to court for non-payment and sent me spurious invoices. She's um, just trying her luck, and it's as simple as that. Rebecca Sadler has a different view. I think the first week we should have got nearly £300, and he paid 60 and then that went on for six weeks before I said, if it's not all paid, we'll take him to court. Their writ empowers Paul and Steve to collect the money or seize assets. We have the authority to, to enter the property now and to remove goods to the value. Right. So, for that sort of money, you'd probably need to clear the house out. Right. So we revert to the original question, is, are you going to pay this now? You don't know the details of the, of the matter, exactly. We don't need to. We've just got a writ here which tells us all we need to know. I'll take your foot out of the No. You can't force me in. You can't force yourself in. Gently, gently, yes, I can. You're not the yes, police. I can. Gently, gently. Yes, I can. You have to show your warrant. Calm. You're not. You're not the police. Calm down. Take, take. Get, get out of the premises. Oh, no. I'm not going to get out of the premises at all. I have a warrant here, which authorises me to be here. So you calm down. When we actually gain entry through the door, they're really taken aback and shocked by the fact that we can actually have the power to get through the door. Take it easy. You have to show me that warrant. You're welcome to read it, sir. I'm not happy about the way you've pushed your way in, right? 
can no, tell no, that. No, 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 no. Right, wait a minute, OK? What I'm going to do, right, is you're going to stay here. I'm going to phone the police, okay? And I'm going to say that you physically assaulted me. Don't snatch off me. Hit me. G give it a go. <laughs> I'm here with the proper authority. I've been doing the job for years. Please don't instruct me on how to do it. That isn't going to help. After a few minutes, Mr Wright no. cools down. But Paul still hasn't got a commitment from him to pay. We still need to address the fact that this money needs to be paid. That's another matter. That's another matter. But the court has decided. But the court has decided and the warrant has been issued. So you're now going to argue about something that's gone as far as the High Court. Mr Wright refuses point blank to pay. Under normal circumstances, the agents would now seize his assets. But in this case, that may be tricky. If you say that this house belongs to somebody else, could you get them to come here? Uh, uh, they won't be here till this evening. Well, I'm sorry, we won't be prepared to wait that long. To prevent the agents starting to remove goods, Mr Wright needs to prove the house and its contents are not his. A few minutes later, Poole receives a call. Yeah, my name is Paul Bowhill. Who am I speaking to, please? It's the owner of the house. OK, and do you own everything that's in here? And if needs be, we can get you to sign a document to that effect in due course. OK, that's all I wanted. Thank you very much. Take care, bye. Mr Wright doesn't own the house or anything of value in it and is still refusing to pay. Paul will have to play his last and biggest card. Paul has one last move he can make. He asked the office to fax over something called a statutory demand. Its use is quite common. It just shows that we're serious. We're just saying if you don't respond to this statutory demand and pay within 21 days of today, and I want to serve it personally for that reason, the next time you see us, it will be with a bankruptcy petition. By not paying now, Mr Wright is playing an expensive game. Even if he avoids bankruptcy, ongoing costs could see his bill increase to as much as £5,000. Paul explains to Mr Wright what happens next. Now, we've already spoken with the plaintiff in this case, and she is prepared to go forward and take it to bankruptcy. I mean, is that going to have a disaster effect on you, or, or are you not really bothered about it? No, she's not entitled to a penny. But the courts think that she is. I mean, for two grand, you want to go bankrupt, it screws your credit rating. And there's no argument, it's a high court risk. It's all same old, same old excuses. The man owes the money. He's been to court twice. He still owes the money, but he's not going to pay it. Well, go bankrupt then. I'm going to dispute the bankruptcy order and um, Rebecca Sadler won't be getting any kind of payment from me whatsoever. The Sadler family must now wait for the outcome of proceedings against Mr Wright. It's 8am in Homerton, London. The tenant and her two children are being evicted from their home of nine years. Paul Bowhill negotiated an extra night in the flat for her, but this morning, she must leave. She spent several hours yesterday asking the council to rehouse her. Apparently, the notes they read through says that social services is not in a position to help us. So um, I should go home since I've got 24 hours to sort out my things and then find somewhere else to go. I said, well, I haven't got anywhere to go, so I'm going to have to come to you if um, I finish packing my stuff. So that's why I told them, and I left. She has no idea where she and her children will sleep tonight. I'm very terrified now. I don't know what's going to happen to us. With nowhere to send her possessions, for the time being, she has to leave them behind. She returns to the council with just a few days' clothing for her and her children.
Two hours later, Paul and Phil arrive to change the locks. So we've got okay. to replace the front door lock. Yep, I got it. But what I'd like to do is have a look inside first. Yep. So if I go and have a look, we've got a girl who's got a permit to work in this country, well educated, a very dignified lady, worked for eight years, paid the rent, lost her job because of circumstances beyond her control, keeping her kids on 50 quid a week since. There's no luxury food in there, is there? On the basis of what we see here, she's not going to come back tonight. It'll be interesting to see, I mean, it's now like quarter past five-ish, is whether she does turn up here or whether she's at the council and said, I hope she's told them she can't come back, because we'll have changed the locks by then. Concerned for her welfare, Paul gives her a call. What's the situation? Um, they are, they are actually offering me a bed and breakfast, but they've taken me outside London. They send me to um, South End on Sea. South End on Sea? Yes. And how, how are you going to get there? Work, and how do I support myself? Crazy. How long are you likely to be there? I don't know. I think the councils are completely and utterly overwhelmed by the scale of the problem. And they're moving people into emergency accommodation 30 to 40 miles away. Sorry. You heard that conversation. I did. It goes from bad to worse. Absolutely. They've sent that girl to South End with a one-way ticket, no money, into emergency accommodation. And that's where they'll forget her. She needs somebody who will take up her cause. If I was retired, I'd do that. Unfortunately, I'm working 60 hours a week and I'm not retired. Well, that's a lie, 59 hours, but there you go. I don't quite know where we go from here. This is one occasion when I will actually say I am absolutely speechless. Mm.